All right, let's talk some more about this epithelial tissue. We saw in the previous video, you can often put two different words together to describe most of them. The first word generally tells you how many cell layers you have. The second one, the cell shape. So look at this right up here at the top, simple squamous. Remember, simple means one, squamous is flat. One flat layer of epithelial cells. Now that is as thin as it gets in the human body. Generally, you see simple squamous layers are where you want things to move. They can still make a barrier, nothing wrong with that, but there are many places where you need barriers that you still need things to move through. And a great example of that are the alveoli. There are millions of microscopic air sacs deep down in your lungs. And look at what makes up the wall around every one of them. That is a very thin layer. That is a simple squamous, one flat cell layer. That is all that it is. So these are very good for covering and protecting, but still where you want things to move. Diffusion of gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide between the air and the blood, and then between the blood and the tissues are just a few places that you'll find those there. Now we move to simple cuboidal. Now simple, still got one cell layer, but now cube shape. Don't forget histology pictures, they often look round, but since round's not an option, you go with cuboidal. Best place to find these right here by far in your kidneys, the nephrons of these tubes that let some of the plasma leave your blood and enter these tubes. And they're gonna reabsorb all the good things in the body you wanna keep, and what's left in them goes out the body is what you'd call urine. So the kidneys are the best place to find simple cuboidal layers of epithelial cells. There's countless numbers of them there. You'll see a few glands and ducts and other things right along with it. Surface of the ovaries is another. So again, single, simple cuboidal, one cube shaped layers we said before, and functions. We're still at a simple layer. Remember, where you've got one cell layer, that's generally where you want things to move. So still a lot of things often move through these cells. Kidneys best place against some glands, Few other places around the body too. But looking right here at this histology picture of the kidneys, all these circles that you see are these nephrons, functional units of the kidneys. And what makes up each one of them is a little cube-shaped cell pushed in there side by side. Again, a lot of the time they may look sort of round, but if it looks like a round cell, go with cube. So again, if you look around the diameter, around the outside of this circle, that is one cube-shaped cell next to another. You don't look at the circle, but the individual cube-shaped cells, which are sandwiched in there side by side. Then there's simple columnar, one tall, thin column shape of epithelial cells. So still just one layer in thickness, but tall in column. You'll see this with some glands of the body right here, some bronchioles, the air passageways in the lung, Notice in reproductive system, uterus, uterine tubes, and so on down the line. You see them in many places. Small intestine may be the best place to find these right here. There are lots of these with microvilli all over their surface. Lots of absorption going on there in the small intestine. So we mentioned the structure. One tall, thin layer, just like a column in front of a house. And function, since we're still at a simple one layer in thickness, you generally want things to move here. So you see a lot of that pretty much anywhere they're found. Here's a little picture here. And if you look at this layer here, right, where I'm moving the cursor, what these are, tall, thin cells sandwiched in there side by side. It's a little difficult to see, but notice how the nucleus looks like it's getting tall and thin. That's a dead giveaway for simple columnar cells. Now we move to the stratified. Now you've got more than one cell layer in thickness. So stratified squamous, more than one cell layer, and the outermost layer will have to be thin and flat. Anywhere you got stratified layers, always look to the most superficial layer to get the shape. They almost always start as cube shape, so go to the outermost layer to see what it is. If it's thin and flat, you got a stratified squamous. Now there's moist and keratinized stratified squamous. The moist ones are found in the passageways opening to the outside of your body. Respiratory, digestive, urinary, and reproductive. They all have passageways opening to the outside. Moist stratified squamous epithelial tissue is what you'll find there. But then the keratinized, that's in the very outer layer of your skin, the epidermis. Big, thick layer, about 50 cell layers in thickness, and that hard keratin along with other material makes a very good barrier. So again, with the structure, remember, when you've got stratified layers, 
they usually start off as cuboidal. That's generally what you'll see, but always go to the very outer superficial layer to get whatever your cell shape is. So with stratified, here's where you really have big, thick, protective barriers. Again, simple, that was generally where you wanted things to move. With stratified, you don't. They generally keep things from moving. Now here's a picture of skin or scalp right here. You can see here starting at the deepest layer and going superficially, that's many cell layers. And look at the ones on the very outside. Look almost like a thin sheet of paper. So that's definitely stratified. Outer layers flat. Stratified squamous is what you've got. Stratified cuboidal and columnar, you won't see in too many places. A few glands around the body is about it. So with stratified cuboidal, I mentioned sweat glands, ovarian follicles, and salivary glands. Here's a picture right here of an ovarian follicle, what's also called an oocyte. That's the reproductive cell of the female. And look at what's protecting it here, the corona radiata. It's generally about two or three cell layers of cuboidal cells protecting it. Once it gets released from an ovary, it's considered outside the body. And that corona radiata, which is that stratified cuboidal layer, gives it good protection while it's outside the body. Stratified columnar. Won't see this in many places. Mammary glands are just about the only one you're ever going to see throughout the book. Notice you can find just a few others, but mammary glands are the most abundant. So stratified, got more than one cell layer. Superficial layer is going to be tall and thin, just like a column. And then you have this pseudo-stratified. Remember, that is falsely stratified. So it's still one cell layer in thickness. It's kind of two of them side by side, and one of them's thick on one end, one of them's thin on the other. So it looks like two layers, but it's just one. And when you have this pseudo-stratified columnar epithelial tissue somewhere, look for cilia. That's where you find the cilia. And if you look at like your air passageways, your bronchi, all these air pipes going down to your lungs, that's a great place to find it. That cilia is moving the mucus, right? Goblet cells within these epithelial cells produce that mucus. It's just the thick, viscous material, which is protein, ions, and water. But the cilia are always moving it. You get stuff trapped in it as you breathe in air and you can't leave it there. You got to move it. You'll move it up to the top of your larynx where you'll swallow it. And it'll go down to your stomach and stomach acids kill about anything. So the mucus production is very big with this type right here. Pseudostratified, you think of cilia right along with it. And look at this little outer ciliated layer right here. Again, this right here is coming from an air passageway. And you can see that little ciliated border, and it'd be moving mucus. Transitional epithelial tissue is a type of epithelial tissue you'll find in the urinary system. Best place to find it is inside the urinary bladder. Now, something goes through a transition, it changes. And this type of epithelial tissue can actually change its number of cell layer and cell shape. When the bladder's empty, you'll have many layers of cube-shaped cells. But as it fills with urine, it stretches that inner wall. Remember, epithelial tissue likes to cover and line things. So as the bladder fills with urine and it stretches that inner layer, just like a balloon inflating, It'll go down to fewer cell layers and generally out to a squamous shape about the time it's full. So always look to the urinary system for that transitional epithelial. And here you can see it, this little outer border that you see right here. That is the inner lining of the urinary bladder. Great place to find transitional epithelial tissue.